Hi and welcome to the channel. Today is a bittersweet day for us. Uh, we are taking the garden that we have had up near the barn for the past 15 years and we are moving all of it, all of the raised beds, all of the herbs, everything, even the pergola is going to come down. We're going to be moving all of this up towards the greenhouse. And if you've seen our videos in the past, this past year, we built a greenhouse and what I decided to do was kind of move everything. We're about 300 yards from the house and for the past 15 years, this has been great, but I've decided to move it up near the house uh, where the greenhouse is. And um, it's a huge step. Um, you know, we've got a lot of memories up here. My girls helped me build these beds when they were four and five years old. We've made changes. You know, we've added an herb garden, we added a garlic garden, we've added some arches, and, and I'll show you all of that. Um, but it's just a very interesting day. I thought I was going to be able to come up here and just dig up everything and move it and be ready for the next stage. But as you start digging and you start really getting into all of this and moving stuff, memories really start to come back. And I think that's a testament of people that love where they live and understand uh, and appreciate everything that they do over the years. You know, we've been here 20 years. Uh, we've had a lot of growing pains and a lot of experiences here. Everything that you see here on the farm uh, was woods when we bought it. Um, so just a lot of time and effort has been put into this uh, over the years. I'm gonna be making some changes. Um, we've got uh, our raised panels, as you guys can see on both sides. I'm actually taking down the cattle panels and we are going to try uh, the half inch um, electric conduit and the strings for our cucumbers and our tomatoes. So I'll be taking that down today and then digging up these. There's a lot of dirt in there. So I'll be doing it, I'll be moving the beds. Uh, my youngest daughter is coming up from school in a couple of hours and I've been instructed to have as much done as I could before she got here because she's tied on time her senior year. So let's get going. Okay, so let me walk you through a couple of the things that uh, we're doing. These were two beds that we've already taken out. I dug those up two weeks ago and moved them. I'll show you later in the video. But we've got a lot of stuff. We, we have our oregano in here and we have our sage in here. And then uh, our thyme, that, that's right here. As you can see, uh, that was smothered out by the lemongrass. I had no idea that was going to get so big. Normally here we have the... Uh, Sour melons, the Mexican sour melons that we absolutely love. That's uh, we got some seeds from Helen Acton's garden uh, from Richmond, Virginia. And then here's one of our big things. As you can see, this this beautiful crepe myrtle. We got a small piece of that from Richmond from Blanche Harris's garden. I don't know if you all know who Blanche Harris is. Uh, you should Google her. Um, Richmond, Virginia. She was an amazing woman. Uh, she's no longer with us, but she was an amazing woman that really mentored some important people in our life uh, here in the family. Uh, here are our beds. Now these are four by eights. And in the corners, I have my four by fours. Uh, I like those more than anything else. Um, but then I have my four by fours in the end. And here's the cattle panels that I was talking about that we are going to be taking out. Um, I've got those on both sides and uh, a lot of dirt. Um, we have these two by fours because there's a slant. That's one of the things I'm looking forward to not having to deal with. When it rains, it comes down and it washed all of our mulch. So that will be uh, something I'll be looking forward to having more on level land. Um, we had culverts. These culverts I cut up. Um, some good old boy rode by our farm one day uh, and it bounced off the back. And after three or four days of me staring at it out in the yard, I went and got it and uh, cut it up. He never came back, so it must not have been that important. We had those here and this one here, and those were squash and zucchini. And then here every year uh, on this, which we're taking this down as well, um, I grew birdhouse gourds or apple gourds, um, and this was really fun. The girls absolutely love this, and you can see in the birdhouses, um, they're 15 years old. Uh, they probably would be condemned. Look at this one been turned completely upside down um and you know we had a little pad here i had a bench here that eventually just rotted out and we just took it completely out and then here is uh the two other ones so some people have asked me why i build the bed so high 
Uh, these are two by eights. And the reason that I do is we have armadillos here and at night they will get, if, it, if this is too low, um, they will get in your bed and completely decimate um, anything that you have. Um, and, and so we had to build them taller. I had these culverts here, right here as well. Again, squash and zucchini ran well. And then this was something that we had a friend come up to the farm and uh, he had grandchildren. So I built these um, and we really haven't been able to use it for them, but these I had um, butternut squash one and that worked out really well. And this one as well. Uh, these had tomatoes and then this one had cucumbers. Um, so we also had, if you are familiar with a castor bean uh, or a castor uh, oil, we had a castor bean plant come up. Now they are poisonous, but they're absolutely majestic. Um, and they're really fun if you have young kids, even though they're poisonous, just don't let them eat them, is to get up underneath these large leaves and it looks like a stained glass. And we always did that with the kids when they were small. And then I had um, squash here and this was our garlic. Now, I know you guys are gonna be impressed with that garlic harvest, but that is what uh, below zero weather does in the state of Alabama. That is it out of about 50. And we really didn't have time to cover them. So as you can see, you know, this is where we had our garden. Now this has been here for 20 years. This is fed uh, the family. And then this past year when we really got started in the market, uh, it's our second year, but but uh, when we really got serious about it this past year, um, we just decided that we needed to uh, expand. And that's when we got the greenhouse and I'm moving that. You can see it, the proximity, the barn, and my compost bin is up there. And then we had all of our grapes are right here. And then our figs and then our orchard. And then we have uh, all of our blueberries. And so they go all the way down through here. And so it's just time we're gonna let this level out. I'm gonna probably put a couple of apple trees that I do from air layering this year. I'll probably put in some there, might put in some figs. I'm really not sure, but it's just a sad and exciting day to be able to move all this stuff that we've got and the 17, 18 years of history and excitement and fun and picking stuff with the girls and just having fun up here. So here we go. It's just not gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna be back breaking to get all the dirt out of these, but hopefully I'm gonna dig out a section and then turn the beds up like I did the other ones put them on the trailer and then scoop all of it on the trailer and take it up there and fill it back up. Let's see. Those are in there pretty deep. Okay, the game plan is gonna be to dig around this area, around the edges. And then I should, like I did the other ones, be able to just hook this down at the bottom and lay it up on its end. I'll leave the dirt here. I'll be piling it up on here. And then we'll do these two, this one and this one first, get the Kubota in and be able to get the dirt and all that. And then, uh, go ahead and move it. So I've got to take the irrigation system, put the drip irrigation, everything was underwater. I'm going to go ahead and take that out, set that to the side real quick, and then start digging. This is our drip irrigation. I have mixed reviews on that, especially if you're on a slanted area. The beds that are here did not get as much water as the beds here. And that's because what we used, which is brilliant, Rainbird puts it out, but there is no way. So if you get all the water coming out here, it's not gonna get to the other end of the hose. That's what we ran into. So any water going uphill 
didn't get a lot and everything down below got everything because there isn't a regulator like the nipples you can put on uh, or the emitters that you can put on your uh, Rainbird. So uh, I do like this. I'm saving everything. I'm going to be using that on the level ground because I do think that it's good for that. And, and if nothing else, we travel a lot uh, and I travel with work. So I'd rather the garden get a little bit than none at all. So that's my mixed review on that. Let's get to digging on this. I was able to just dig these sides out, which is really where the, the bulk of it's at. And then that frees it up. I do have a two by four that goes the length of this that I'm gonna have to really be careful of on this one that I'd forgotten was in here. Yeah, that two by four is right here in the middle. I'm really hoping that does not cause me any tough issues with getting this out. And the main reason that two by four is there is that I don't want my beds to bow out. So this kind of holds it in a uniform pattern. I haven't had any trouble with it. So I don't know if it worked or not. I just know that when I built it, I kind of felt like I needed it. But this should not take that much. Really, it's just loosening the dirt around the bed. Okay, I was able to get the bed pulled up and laid on its side. Just wanted to show you all. Here's something that I really saw that, that it's great. Always a negative to a positive on stuff. Look at the layers of the dirt over the years. Now, when we started this place, we didn't have the money to go out and get a bunch of topsoil and black cow and loaded up and peat and all that stuff. We went to the woods, we dug up stuff, we dumped it in here. And then over the years, we've piled stuff, but it's very interesting. Now these are, uh, let's see, two by eight, so those are about 15 inches high. And you can see there's that native soil still down there. But look at where it's gotten into and, and how beautiful over time that it has grown. And you know, we've grown everything in here, peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, carrots. And then down here, I find it interesting. It was not as mixed in. That native soil down here is completely different. Now these beds, as I said, are 15 years old. And we've just over the years, just continued to, you know, lay and lay and lay and lay and lay topsoil or, excuse me, not topsoil, we're really black cow and uh, when we stepped up to compost a couple years ago when we water, but you can definitely see the difference. Look right here, you know, and, and I wonder, you know, so here's clay and then I wonder, you know, who knows, 2009 or 10, maybe I put down a, a layer of peat moss or something, sorghum peat moss or maybe some topsoil and then had to add some more clay down the road or some topsoil because we didn't have the cash who knows and then you know from here on you know maybe 
but I just find that really interesting. I wanted to show you all that. So this one's out. You can see how I reinforced this. Another time for you guys to see. So I have the four by fours in the corners. I had two braces there. Uh, I could have spaced those differently. And the four by four here that goes all the way. The four by four there that goes all the way where the cattle panel was. But then in the middle, these hold your boards together. And then I ran one treated two by four over to this side. And then I put uh, some scrap pieces in all corners. A lot of people will talk about treated lumber. And I understand, uh, you know, the, the guys, I wouldn't call them extremists. I think they're just loyalists uh, to the environment. And I am, you know, I'm organic. But if you don't have the money to go and buy cedar planks, which are about five, ten times more than these are, if you don't have the money, what are you supposed to do? Just not have a garden? So for me, um, I have no problem with the treated two by fours or the, the treated two by eights. And I'll be using them in the future. Um, I have not seen anything at all in all of my gardening um, that says that this, you know, I think 2003 is when they stopped uh, the, the really bad treatment of lumber. And now this is supposed to be okay, but I just wanted to show you all that. Okay, we have completed uh, the two raised beds and moved them. Uh, I didn't really want to bore you all with all the digging of the dirt and moving the trailer. So just wanted to go ahead and show you what I've done is I've moved them up here. Now, as you saw in my other videos, this is, this is separate. Okay, I've decided to go ahead and seam them up. And it's a little bit off just because... This was built probably in 2006 or seven, the more uh, same size and everything, but it's just a little jacked up on the back. I, that's more of just me and my oddities of not really liking that. But my 18 year old says it's good, so I'm good with it. And she would tell me if it looked bad. So I went ahead and, and leveled them up. What you're gonna see is what I'd mentioned. The ground actually doesn't just go down, it goes down and over. So. I've got it, luckily, I've got it to where a block, a brick sitting up on its side is going to level that out. I've taken a really long board. This is a great way for you all that are putting in raised beds. We've put in a lot. Get a board longer than the raised bed. Get a long level and put it up, and you're able to get that. When we first started doing raised beds, we were trying to get this side level, and then we would come over here and try and get this level, and then we would get here. And, and it was just absolutely chaotic. So it's really good just to get a long board and put it here. And then I have a, a connector board. Izzy, come right up here and let me show you. I have a connector board right here that I mentioned. And I just set that down and that's level as well. So I know the deck uh, of the entire bed is level. Now we're going to be putting down some cardboard. Now, I know there's going to be a question about this. Really what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. And if a little bit spills out, I'm not going to worry about it. My game plan is the space here between here and then my space here is going to be or is three feet, eight inches. My tarp that I got from Johnny's is four feet. That's going to give me a little bit of room to tuck two inches underneath the beds and I will have that running and then it'll go here. The game plan will then be to put beds just like these right here and then another two right here and if that's done correctly uh, my military warped mind will bring that in correctly and we will be spot on uh, in a perfect square the older I get the less I worry about stuff like that but right now I just want to try and get it the best I can but we are going to go ahead and get these two filled this weekend I've got cardboard that we're going to put in the bottom. Uh, and then we're going to plant our carrots in here this weekend. We're going to put the plastic tarp on. I'm going to show you all in a video how to do that. And then when we bring the stuff out of the greenhouse, we will be able to bring it right in here. And then when the last frost comes, you take the plastic off. It's perfect. But 
I wanted to show you guys what we've done. I hope this has been educational. Any questions, comments, give me a thumbs up. It helps my analytics. And we will keep rocking. I've got more stuff to do today, and it's getting late. Thank you.